The exercise advice we get for exercising with atrial fibrillation kind of sucks and you can do better. If I'd followed it, I don't think I'd be in AFib remission right now. You can likely greatly improve your chances of putting your AFib into remission by training a smarter way. More importantly, if you're trying to improve your odds of ablation success, or even your odds of, say, just not dying after an ablation, then your best bet is to really build your cardiorespiratory fitness in the most effective way. So for you, my fellow AFibbers, I'm bringing some personal success and some science to back it up. So stick around, we're going to go into all the reasons why 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week sucks and how you can get far better results for the effort. Okay, before we get at it, I left links to some studies down below that are gonna 100% back up what I'm telling you today. If you have any questions about exercising with your AFib, you'd like some advice, post them in the comments, I'll jump in when I can. But if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel, much appreciated. Let's go over why 150 minutes of moderate exercise a week sucks as a guideline. Two ways that are far superior and which method may be best for you. The idea that you exercise in this way is completely at odds with endurance-based athletes and how they train and what their coaches prescribe. We see this sad advice everywhere. 150 minutes a week, moderate effort. No running coach, no boxing coach, no biking, speed walking coach, swimming coach would devise a training plan like this. It's just a recycled guideline from the general health guidelines and not specific to AFibers at all. So why is this the recommendation? I even asked an AI system. This is what it told me. For those with AFib, aiming for 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise per week is generally recommended. Shame on you, AI. You should know better. There is just so much wrong with this approach for those with atrial fibrillation. 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week is perfect if you like drudge work, burning out, and not getting the most bang for your buck. Let me explain a few things about moderate intensity exercise. It can be exhausting and feel like drudge work. It lacks variety and becomes hard to be consistent about. It's harder to recover from than a proper training program. And worse, it's less effective than more fun alternatives. Now, if you're just starting out and you don't know what to do, then go see my walking video, the best exercise for AFib, because it is at first. But once you're walking an hour a day with ease, you are ready for more. So let's leverage some really great and recent science. Study one, published in 2020, teaches us that the better your cardiorespiratory fitness, the better your chances of an ablation fixing your atrial fibrillation for good, and the lower your chances of all-cause mortality after ablation. That means you're less likely to die. Yikes. As well, study two, the active AF randomized control trial directly compares 150 minutes a week of moderate exercise advice in a control group against another group that did some high-intensity interval training combined with low intensity training for a total of up to three and a half hours of exercise per week. Now in that study, guess which group had massively better outcomes for AFib? Right, it was the interval group that worked up to 210 minutes a week by combining really easy workouts with one really tough one each week. Let's look at real training plans for athletes of all levels who need to constantly improve their cardiorespiratory fitness. What do their coaches and trainers prescribe? Obviously, they draw from time-proven methods shown to build amazing stamina. So let's look at these two main training philosophies that are at play, and then let's narrow down which of the two may be best for you. There are two broad camps when it comes to training cardiorespiratory ability, and there is a lot of disagreement between them. But you can rest assured, pretty much all of them agree that doing all your training at moderate intensity is a terrible waste of time. Let's focus on distance running for our examples, but you could use the same approach on your elliptical, race walking, biking, or any other endurance training method. Two camps are pretty much 80-20, and base building. 80-20 endurance training programs are based on the principle that 80% of your training should be performed at low intensity, while the remaining 20% should be at moderate to high intensity. For example, an 80-20 running program would look something like this. 80% of the week at low intensity, that's four easy runs a week, maintain a conversational pace, one longer run at an easy pace, gradually increase the distance of that run, and then 20% of the time at moderate to high intensity. So, an interval session or a tempo run where you try to go as hard as you can after warming up for 20 minutes. Popular versions of this program exist for biking, triathlon, swimming, 
maybe even race walking. It's effective for trainees at nearly all fitness levels right up to elite. And the payoff is far greater than doing all your work at a moderate pace. And it sounds a lot like the protocol used in the active AF trial that totally outperformed the standard advice. In contrast, the cardio base building programs feature high to very high volume at a low intensity and aim to improve your aerobic capacity, endurance, and overall fitness. A base building program for running may look something like this. Five to six easy runs a week, maintaining conversational pace, Gradually increase weekly mileage by 10%, one weekly long run at an easy pace. Gradually increase the distance to that, and one to two if you want more weekly runs at a very slow pace. The focus is on easy effort over long periods to build cardiorespiratory fitness in a safe way. Now, let me ask you, do either of these cardiorespiratory training programs used for decades by countless athletes sound anything like 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise per week is generally recommended. Now, there is a time when athletes go a long time at a moderate pace. Pretty much we call that race day, and maybe a few pace testing sessions here and there. And guess when most athletes experience an injury? Pretty much on race day or pace testing. Long periods at moderate training loads are almost as hard to recover from as high intensity shorter sessions, but take longer and are more exhausting, thus allowing you a bigger window of opportunity for injury. And finally, don't provide as much stimulus to trigger your heart and lungs to improve as an 80-20 or a base building program would. They are all pain and little gain. They are better than doing nothing. Maybe that's why they're prescribed, because they sound like they make sense, but in practice, not so much. So which way should you go, 80-20 or base building? Let's say you have atrial fibrillation or another cardiac concern high blood pressure, for example. You have followed the advice in my previous videos. You've worked up to where you can walk an hour a day. Where do you go from here? Which approach is ideal for you? Before choosing, the first thing to consider is what your doctor's advice is. Ask your doctor if you can do 20% of your cardio at a high intensity. If you can, then you can choose whatever approach you enjoy the most and are most likely to stick to. 80-20 tends to be more ideal for people without high amounts of free time to exercise. So for most people, it will be an 80-20 approach. Be sure to take a rest day after your high intensity day to reap the most benefit. But if you have the time, base building programs can build amazing cardiorespiratory ability with low risk of injury. But the key is to make sure you are indeed staying at an easy conversational pace. And because of the easy effort, you can often double up the benefit by listening to podcasts or watching your favorite TV show on the treadmill and get the most out of your time. Another thing to consider, if you are scared to jack up your heart rate because you're afraid to set off your AFib, then base building is pretty much your only choice until you have enough confidence to do the high intensity portions of an 80-20 split. Not that you'll need to because base building alone can improve your cardio fitness for decades. If you really want some variety but you have that fear, you can do an 80-20 and make the 20% moderate intensity at first as you work up to more powerful efforts and develop the confidence. Just be careful to keep the low intensity stuff actually low intensity and you'll be golden. Now if this advice so far seems prudent and sound, please drop me a like and show YouTube that you found it useful. I much appreciate it. Right now I'm training for a half marathon. I'm doing an 80-20 approach with 80% of my runs being a super easy pace and 20% of the time I go very hard using intervals. I just finished one half an hour ago. Now, if you're not ready for programs like this or your medical clearance only allows for something lighter, then check out my walking video or check out my friend Gail's seated yoga classes here. Check the show notes for the links. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments or leave a voice message on my website. This is your friend, Big Northern Bear, out.